Cleopatra 7, L. C. 69-30 BC, R. 51-30 BC, was the last ruler of Egypt before it was annexed as a province of Rome. Although arguably the most famous Egyptian queen, Cleopatra was actually Greek and a member of the Ptolemaic dynasty, 323-30 BC, which ruled Egypt after the death of Alexander the Great, L. 356-323 BC. Cleopatra is probably best known for her love affair with the Roman general and statesman Mark Antony, L. 83-30 BC, as well as her earlier affair with Julius Caesar, L. 100-44 BC, but was a powerful queen before her interaction with either and a much stronger monarch than any of the later Ptolemaic dynasty. Cleopatra was fluent in a number of languages, is reported to have been extremely charming, and was an effective diplomat and administrator. Her involvement with both Caesar and Mark Antony came about after she had already successfully ruled and steered Egypt through a difficult period. Her affair with Antony brought her into direct conflict with Octavian Caesar, later known as Augustus Caesar, R. 27 BC, 14 AD, who was Antony's brother-in-law. Octavian would defeat Cleopatra and Antony in the Battle of Actium in 31 BC, ending her reign. She and Antony would then both commit suicide the following year and Octavian would found the Roman Empire and relegate Cleopatra to a minor chapter in Rome's past. Youth and Succession In June of 323 BC, Alexander the Great died and his vast empire was divided among his generals. One of these generals was Ptolemy I Soter, R. 323-282 BC, a fellow Macedonian, who would found the Ptolemaic dynasty in ancient Egypt. The Ptolemaic line, of Macedonian Greek ethnicity, would continue to rule Egypt until the death of Cleopatra VII in 30 BC when it was taken by Rome. Ptolemy I, Ptolemy II, R. 285-246 BC, and Ptolemy III, R. 246-222 BC, governed Egypt well, but after them, their successors ruled poorly until Cleopatra came to the throne. In fact, the difficulties she had to overcome were primarily the legacy of her predecessors. Cleopatra VII Philopater was born in 69 BCE and ruled jointly with her father, Ptolemy XII Alites. When she was 18 years old, her father died, leaving her the throne. Because Egyptian tradition held that a woman needed a male consort to reign, her 12-year-old brother, Ptolemy XIII, was ceremonially married to her. Cleopatra soon dropped his name from all official documents, however, and ruled alone. The Ptolemies, insisting on Macedonian Greek superiority, had ruled in Egypt for centuries without ever learning the Egyptian language or embracing the customs. Cleopatra, however, was fluent in Egyptian, eloquent in her native Greek, and proficient in other languages as well. Because of this, she was able to communicate easily with diplomats from other countries without the need of a translator and, shortly after assuming the throne, without bothering to hear the counsel of her advisors on matters of state. Schiff notes how Cleopatra had the gift of languages and glided easily among them. Pompey, Caesar and the Coming of Rome At about this same time the Roman general and politician, Pompey the Great, was defeated by Julius Caesar at the Battle of Pharsalus. Pompey was the state-appointed guardian over the younger Ptolemy children and, on his campaigns, had spent considerable time in Egypt. Believing he would be welcomed by friends, Pompey fled from Pharsalus to Egypt but, instead of finding sanctuary, was murdered under the gaze of Ptolemy XIII as he came on shore at Alexandria. Caesar's army was numerically inferior to Pompey's and it was believed that Caesar's stunning victory meant that the gods favored him over Pompey. Further, it seemed to make more sense to Ptolemy XIII's advisor Pothinus to align the young king with the future of Rome rather than the past. Upon arriving in Egypt with his legions, in pursuit of Pompey, Caesar was allegedly outraged that Pompey had been killed, declared martial law, and set himself up in the royal palace. Ptolemy XIII fled to Pelusium with his court. Caesar, however, was not about to let the young ruler slip away to foment trouble and had him brought back to Alexandria. Cleopatra was still in exile and knew there was no way she could simply walk into the palace unmolested. 
recognizing in Caesar her chance to regain power, she is said to have had herself rolled in a rug, ostensibly a gift for the Roman general, and carried through the enemy lines. She and Caesar seem to strike up an instant affinity for each other and, by the next morning when Ptolemy XIII arrived to meet with Caesar, Cleopatra and Caesar were already lovers. The young pharaoh was outraged. Cleopatra and Julius Caesar Ptolemy XIII turned to his general Achillas for support and war broke out in Alexandria between Caesar's legions and the Egyptian army. Caesar and Cleopatra were besieged in the royal palace for six months until Roman reinforcements were able to arrive and break the Egyptian lines. It is at this time, according to some historians, that the great library at Alexandria was accidentally burned, though this claim has been challenged. Before the Roman victory over Ptolemy XIII, however, Cleopatra's half-sister, Arsino, who had returned with her, fled the palace for Achilla's camp and had herself proclaimed queen in Cleopatra's place. Ptolemy XIII drowned in the Nile attempting to escape after the battle and the other leaders of the coup against Cleopatra were killed in battle or shortly afterwards. Arsino was captured and sent to Rome in defeat but was spared her life by Caesar who exiled her to live in the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus where she would remain until 41 BC when, at Cleopatra's urging, Mark Antony had her executed. Cleopatra and Mark Antony When Caesar was assassinated in 44 BC, Cleopatra fled Rome with Caesar Ion and returned to Alexandria. Caesar's right-hand man, Mark Antony, joined with his grandnephew Octavian and friend Lepidus to pursue and defeat the conspirators who had murdered Caesar. After the Battle of Philippi, at which the forces of Antony and Octavian defeated those of Brutus and Cassius, Antony emerged as ruler of the eastern provinces, including Egypt, while Octavian held the west. In 41 BC, Cleopatra was summoned to appear before Antony in Tarsus to answer charges she had given aid to Brutus and Cassius. Cleopatra delayed in coming and then delayed further in complying with Antony's summons, making it clear that, as Queen of Egypt, she would come in her own time when she saw fit. Egypt was, at this time, teetering on the edge of economic chaos but, even so, Cleopatra made sure to present herself as a true sovereign, appearing in luxury on her barge, dressed as Aphrodite. Mark Antony and Cleopatra instantly became lovers and would remain so for the next ten years. She would bear him three children, Cleopatra Selene II, Alexander Helios, and Ptolemy Philadelphus, and he considered her his wife, even though he was married, first, to Fulvia and then, to Octavia, the sister of Octavia. He eventually divorced Octavia to marry Cleopatra legally. Roman Civil War and Cleopatra's Death During these years, Antony's relationship with Octavian would steadily disintegrate. Octavian was outraged by Antony's behavior and, especially, the disrespect shown to his sister as well as to himself. He repeatedly rebuked Antony and, in at least one instance, Antony responded directly. In 33 BC, Antony returned a letter to Octavian. Octavian did not appreciate the reply nor any of Antony's other breaches of policy, courtesy, or propriety, and their personal and professional relationship degenerated further to the point where civil war broke out. After a number of engagements which almost routinely favored Octavian, Cleopatra's and Antony's forces were defeated by Octavians at the Battle of Actium in 31 BCE and, a year later, they both committed suicide. Antony, upon hearing the false report of Cleopatra's death, stabbed himself. He learned, too late, that she still lived and Octavian allowed him to be brought to the queen where he died in her arms. Octavian then demanded an audience with the queen where the conditions of her defeat were made plain to her. The terms were hardly favorable and Cleopatra understood she would be brought to Rome a captive to adorn Octavian's triumph. Recognizing that she would not be able to manipulate Octavian as she had Caesar and Antony, Cleopatra asked for, and was granted, time to prepare herself. She then had herself poisoned through the bite of a snake, traditionally an ASP, though most scholars today believe it was an Egyptian cobra. Octavian had her son Caesar Ion murdered and her children by Antony brought to Rome where they were raised by Octavia, thus ended the Ptolemaic line of Egyptian rulers. 
Cleopatra has continued to cast that same spell throughout the centuries since her death and remains the most famous queen of ancient Egypt. Movies, books, television shows, and plays have been produced about her life and she is depicted in works of art in every century up to the present day. Even so, as Schiff notes, she is almost universally remembered as the woman who seduced two powerful men rather than for what she accomplished before meeting them. Cleopatra was only 39 years old when she died and had ruled for 22 of those years. In an age when women rarely or never asserted political control over men, and female rulers were rare, she managed to maintain Egypt in a state of independence for as long as she held the throne and never forgot what was due to her people. In keeping with the ancient traditions of the land, she tried to maintain the concept of ma'at, balance and harmony, as well as she could under the circumstances of the time. Though she was Macedonian Greek, not Egyptian, she has come to symbolize ancient Egypt in the popular imagination more than any other Egyptian monarch.